Hey everyone, welcome back to STEM at the Library. My name is Lauren and I am super excited to have you here with me today. So for today's program, we are going to learn about the law of the pendulum by building our own sand pendulum. How cool is that? To complete this activity, you will need plenty of space, as well as colorful sand, plain sand, or you can even use salt. If you do happen to use sand, make sure it is completely dry. Otherwise, it won't flow freely out of the bottle, which leads us to our next item. You're gonna need a plastic bottle. You're also going to need large sheets of dark paper or a plastic tablecloth or trash bag. You're going to need a tape measure, string, a pair of scissors, a hole punch, adhesive putty, duct tape if you are going to use large sheets of dark paper, and a pencil. Okay, let's get started. First, remove the cap from your plastic bottle and place it upside down on a wad of the adhesive putty. Then, use your scissors to carefully make a hole about one eighth of an inch wide in the center. Please ask an adult for assistance if you find yourself having some difficulty, as some bottle caps are more easy to puncture than others. After you have made a hole, screw the cap back onto the bottle with the putty still in place. This next step is tricky, so please ask an adult for assistance. Grab your scissors and carefully cut off the bottom of your bottle, trying your best to cut in a straight line. Use the hole punch to make three holes along the bottom of the bottle. Make these holes about half an inch from the cut edge of your bottle and do your best to make them evenly spaced. Grab your string and measure and cut a piece that is about 10 inches long. Tie the piece of string you just cut to two of the holes you just made. You want to make a loop like this and make sure those knots are secure. Now you're going to cut another piece of string. Grab that measuring tape because this piece needs to be at least seven feet long. Now tie one end of this long piece of string to the third hole in the bottle, and then tie it to the loop you made earlier. Try to keep the three lengths of string tied to each hole equal in length. You may need to adjust your knot to make sure the bottle will hang straight. Now you have successfully built your pendulum. This next step may require some adult assistance because you're going to have to suspend your pendulum from a sturdy high point. This could be a tree branch or ceiling beam or a ceiling hook. Just make sure that it is sturdy and that the bottle cap with the putty is about two inches above the ground. Carefully pour your sand into your bottle. Make sure you don't add too much sand. You don't want the cap of your pendulum touching the ground. Today, I am using a black plastic tablecloth to catch the sand that falls from the pendulum. If you're using large pieces of dark paper, grab your duct tape and join a few sheets together. Place this under your pendulum. Remove the putty from the bottle cap and gently push the pendulum sideways to make it swing in a circle. See how the bottle moves in oval shapes? These are called ellipses. You will notice that the ellipses are getting smaller and smaller. This is because the pendulum is losing energy due to friction between the string and the point where it is tied and air resistance between the bottle and the air. Pretty cool, huh? So how does it work? First, let's take a moment to go back in time. Way back in time. To the 16th century. Have you ever heard of the scientist Galileo? Well, Galileo is from the 16th century and has been called the founder of modern science. He also studied the effect of forces on the motion of bodies. 
One day, while watching a chandelier swing back and forth in the Cathedral of Pisa, he discovered that it took the same time for each swing, whether the swings were large or small. This discovery became known as the Law of the Pendulum, and it led to the invention of pendulum clocks to keep track of time. Have you ever seen a clock that looks like this? That's a pendulum clock. Back to our experiment. If you were to pull your pendulum away from its resting point when it is not moving and then let it go, you would see it swing back and forth in a straight line until it ran out of energy. In our case, because we initially pushed it sideways, the pendulum swung along a curving path that was continuously changing direction. Do you remember what the curving path is called? An ellipse, that's right, well done. Remember, a moving object only changes direction when a force acts on it. What's happening here is the force of gravity is pulling the pendulum downward and back to the middle while the tension in the string pulls the pendulum upward at an angle. The result of these two forces is called a net force that is pulling the pendulum inward. The combination of the sideways push and the pull of the string prevents the pendulum from moving back to the middle directly. So it moves in ellipses instead. As always, test these concepts out more. When you have no more sand in the bottle, Simply fold up your paper or plastic and tip the sand back into the bottle and do it again and again, as many times as you would like. But this time, try changing the length of your string to see how it affects the time it takes for the pendulum to swing back and forth in a straight line. If you want to try something really cool, try making the string Y-shaped as shown here. Can you predict what will happen? If you said it will result in different sand patterns, then you are correct. Any idea why? Well, by creating a Y shape, you give the pendulum a short period of time in one direction and a long period of time in another, resulting in more complex sand patterns that are called Lissajous curves. Just have fun with it. You can even try pushing your pendulum into a different trajectory to change the pattern, like you see me doing here. Hmm, this gets me thinking. What do you think would happen if we raised or lowered the meeting point, or position of the knot seen here? As always, we would love to know. So please feel free to share your experience building a sand pendulum with us by sending an email to lsands at car.org. Or better yet, Come see us at the library and tell us. Thanks so much for joining us again for STEM at the library. We look forward to experimenting more with you every Monday at 2. Keep exploring. Mm -hmm.